When it comes to installing electrical outlets or electrical receptacles, which is actually their real name, I've seen a lot of different mistakes that have been made. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the five most common mistakes I've seen made and how you can avoid them. Instead of using these uh, side wire terminals to install the wire, uh, basically you put the wire around the terminal screw and then tighten it down. Instead of using that, they'll use these backstab holes. So what you'll do here, uh, if you were to use one of these, you'd push the wire into this until it locks in place, and then that would make your connection. Now, um, since these holes are in place, they can be used. Uh, it's not against any kind of code, at least not a national code, uh, to where you can't use these to make the connection. In fact, I see a lot of professional electricians uh, prefer to use these holes when wiring a new home uh, because of their speed. But just because it's approved doesn't mean it's the way that you should actually install one of these receptacles. What happens is over time, uh, the wire can loosen up in this connection and if it loosens up, it can either uh, come loose uh, slightly, causing the outlet to no longer function, or it could come loose all the way and then it could cause a bigger problem like a short. And if it shorts out, uh, and there could be arcing and then it could cause a fire. So uh, really this method should be avoided at all costs and you should just use the terminal screws to wire a new receptacle. Now let me show you a little bit more uh, of how this works. I've actually taken this receptacle apart and I wanna show you exactly what holds this wire in place. I'm gonna pull out this side. So by taking this out, you can kind of see the design flaw a little bit better. Uh, the only thing holding this wire in place is this little spring clip here that's putting pressure on the wire and it's forcing it in place and being held in place. So you can see as over time, as you plug things into an outlet and take things out, um, that there's a big chance for this wire to loosen up over time in the spring um, to uh, you know kind of lose its effectiveness and then the wire can be loose. This really is a bad practice uh, when it comes to wiring a receptacle. The only reason you would want to do this is if you're um, looking for speed only and not quality. So I'd avoid this at all costs. Now as an alternative to this, if you're still looking for speed, you can purchase what's called a commercial grade or a spec grade receptacle. And let me show you how that works. Okay, so here's a commercial or a spec grade receptacle. So you can see here, instead of having uh, those little holes on the back here um, to put the wire into, you have more of these slots on the side. And instead of having uh, the little clip that holds the wire in place, on the sides here, you have the wire uh, being held in place by clamps. So this is actually, um, once you tighten down these terminal screws, then that puts pressure on the wire and the, the terminal screws are actually what holds that wire in place. So there's a lot more surface area there. It's not gonna loosen up like it would if it's just uh, being held in place by the clips on the back stab method. So if you're wanting speed and a good connection, then use a spec grade or commercial grade receptacle and then use the back wire method. Another common mistake I've seen is when it comes to two prong receptacles. So uh, you'll find these a lot of times in older homes. They don't have that third ground plug like you would see on a typical receptacle. And uh, in order to get around this issue uh, without having to rewire the house and be able to plug in modern equipment, a lot of times people will buy what's called a uh, cheater plug. And basically this is uh, just an adapter that plugs into the receptacle. So while this is a cheap option, it doesn't provide you with a true ground and it also doesn't provide you with any additional safety protection against uh, any kind of a ground fault that might happen with equipment that you have plugged into this. So an alternative to this that's a lot better is to install what's called a GFCI receptacle. So uh, while this still won't provide you with a true ground, it will provide you with additional safety functions. So if you have any kind of a ground fault uh, that happens that provides an unsafe situation, there's circuitry that's inside of this that will automatically uh, detect that variance in the electrical current and it will shut off the uh, power within this receptacle itself. Um, this is a really great option. It's also approved uh, by the NEC code, and I'll have that code uh, listed down here for reference. So if you're looking for a way to get around having you know, these two prong plugs in your house without having to rewire your home, GFCI is a really great and affordable option uh, to be able to provide you an additional level of protection. While it still won't provide you that full ground that some equipment requires, it will provide that extra level of safety. Uh, so this is a really good option to uh, look into. Now that brings me to another big issue, which is instead of using these cheater plugs in this uh, two-prong or ungrounded house wiring situation, you'll see DIYers go ahead and replace the receptacle with a typical receptacle or typical outlet that you would see. And in order to get around the issue of it not showing that it has a ground, you'll see something like this in place. And this is called a bootleg ground. 
Um, basically what a bootleg ground is, it's, it's connecting the neutral terminal to the ground terminal of the receptacle in order to trick the testers to show that this receptacle actually has a ground when in fact it does not. Now, admittedly, this is more of an extreme example. Uh, you wouldn't have a bare uh, copper wire exposed in a manner such as this. I just did this for demonstration purposes to show uh, how this was actually wired up to where you have this uh, ground screw uh, connected up to the neutral screw in some form or fashion. And the disadvantage to this is if you have this in place, this is very unsafe. This is actually an illegal practice and it can cause, in worst cases, it can cause fires in a house. So you don't wanna have this uh, set up in place. By all means, don't use a bootleg ground uh, ever. I'd rather you use a cheater plug, quite frankly, but instead of doing that, uh, highly, highly recommend that you, again, look at installing a GFCI receptacle in order to have that third prong, um, but do it in such a way to where you don't have an unsafe situation. All right, really quick, if you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that like button below. I'd really appreciate it. It does help the channel quite a bit and it can help these videos get out to more and more people so I can help a lot more people avoid these common mistakes. All right, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it and let's get back to the video. So another common issue I see DI wires make is by placing two wires underneath one terminal screw. So you can see here there's two neutral wires underneath this terminal screw. And uh, that's usually done because there are more uh, sets of wires in the box that can be handled um, by just the number of terminal screws that are actually on the receptacle. So in order to you know, get around that issue, they'll double up the wires on a terminal screw and then they'll tighten it down uh, instead of doing it the right way, which I'll, I'll show you what the right way is here in a second. But uh, with this method, the problem with this is this does not provide a tight connection. Um, this is prone to loosening up over time. This is also prone to carrying um, current incorrectly too. So you might have an issue where uh, this could get hot because of the amount of current flowing through this. It could start arcing. It co could cause all kinds of issues. So you never, never, ever want to double up wires underneath a terminal screw. Uh, likewise, you don't want to do this either. You don't want to you know, use the terminal screw for one wire and then also use um, the backstab port for another wire. Uh, that's just asking for troubles. What you do wanna do instead is to use what's called a pigtail connection. So you have the wires coming into a wire nut and then you have what's called a pigtail coming out of this wire nut and making the connection onto the receptacle here underneath this terminal screw. Uh, so if you have more than uh, enough wires coming into a box to where uh, the receptacle can't handle it without placing you know, more than one wire under each terminal screw, then you'll wanna use a pigtail connection for this. This is the safe method. Um, this is not safe. Now the number one mistake I see made with these electrical receptacles is reusing wire nuts, believe it or not. So this is a brand new wire nut. You can kind of see in here, uh, the spring that holds the wires in place. And then here's a used wire nut. And uh, this one has had some issues. You can see on the inside, it's uh, not shiny. It's kind of uh, corroded uh, looking. It's, it's really not in great shape. So if I were to not check this and I were to reuse it, this would provide a really, really poor connection for the wires and it could cause problems again, like arcing, it could start a fire, things like that. So you wanna be sure to use new wire nuts whenever you're creating or making uh, new connections. So the alternative to this would be using what's called a Wago connector. Now Wagos function, uh, they have the same purpose as a wire nut, but the difference is instead of putting the wires into the wire nut in order to make the connection like you see here um, with Wagos, basically these have levers and then you can insert the wire into this connection and then close the lever down and it will make a really tight, secure connection uh, that won't come loose. Here's a version uh, where we have three wires coming into it. That's basically the equivalent of this wire nut here. That's got three wires coming into it. Um, they also make versions where there's just uh, two wires like I showed here a second ago. And they even make them where they're, uh, they can hold up to five wires. So this is a really great option. Um, some people think that they're not safe, but they're rated for all use, uh, every use that you would have a wire nut rated for. And in fact, uh, it's arguably safer and uh, better than wire nuts too. One of the reasons for this is because these are reusable. So if you ever have to make any kind of changes to the wiring, you can always lift up the lever, pull the wire out and put a new one in. Um, the other thing that these are great for is making connections between solid copper wire and stranded copper wire. So if you have to make a connection, say with a new light fixture, a lot of times those wires are stranded wires instead of the solid wires like this. And then connecting those together inside of a wire nut just doesn't really work very well. It doesn't give a solid connection. Uh, but with these, you can mix and match the different wire types. 
and it'll provide a really solid connection for you um, that you won't have to worry about. I have another video over here that I'm sure you'll enjoy watching just as much as this one. Otherwise, don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.